Performance analysis. The primary aim to go for a parallel solution for any problem is to save the time. Analyzing the performance of a parallel program will help us to understand the barriers to high throughput and suggest the room for improvement. So we are starting to familiarize with two terminologies which are used in parallel computing. The first one is the speed up and the second one efficiency. The speed up is the ratio between the sequential execution time and the parallel execution time. So for any parallel program, there will be three components. Some area of code which can be executed sequentially and some area of code which can be executed parallelly. And the communication overhead due to this parallel execution. So with this simple category, which we are going to define the terms sigma of n, phi of n and kappa of n. So what is sigma of n? Sigma of n represents the computations which can be performed sequentially. Phi of n represents the computations which can be performed parallelly. And kappa of n comma p represents the parallel overhead between p processes. So we are going to see what is speed up. So speed up is denoted as psi of n comma p where n is the problem size and p is the number of processes. So speed up is the ratio between sequential execution time and parallel execution time. So what is sequential execution time? So if a program is executed by only one processor, the total time taken would be sigma of n plus phi of n. Why? Because sigma of n represents the time which is required to execute that sequential part. And phi of n is the time required to execute that parallel part. Here there are no more than one processor. So sigma of n plus phi of n will be the total execution time taken for a serial program. So what about the parallel execution time? Here again, the sequential code requires the same time because it cannot be executed parallelly. Now, what about the parallel execution time? Parallel execution time is actually is divided among P processes. And finally, we have got the third term, which is called kappa of n comma P, which is the time required among these processes to communicate to each other. So finally, we can infer that xi of n comma P, which is the speed up, will be less than or equal to sigma of n plus phi of n divided by sigma of n plus phi of n by p plus kappa of n comma p. Now what is efficiency? The efficiency of the parallel program is a measure of processor utilization. So it is given as sequential execution time divided by the number of processors used into the parallel execution time. So we will try to define it as epsilon n comma p, which represents the efficiency. So you can see that the sequential execution time is given as sigma of n plus phi of n. Now we know what is the parallel execution time. It will be sigma of n plus phi of n divided by p plus kappa of n comma p. Now we have to multiply the entire term with the number of processes. So what we can see is epsilon n comma p will be always less than or equal to sigma of n plus phi of n divided by p sigma n plus phi of n plus p kappa of n comma p where epsilon ranges from 0 to 1. Now we'll see what is Amdahl's law. For that we will rewind what is speed up speed up is psi of n comma p which is much lesser than sigma of n plus phi of n divided by sigma of n plus phi of n divided by p plus kappa of n comma p. Now specifically look into this term kappa of n comma p. If p is equal to 1 what happens kappa of n comma p will be 0 because there are 
no more than one processor available there is no communication needed so kappa of n comma p will be zero but if p is greater than 1 the kappa of n comma p will always be greater than 0 so this term will be always greater than 0 for a parallel execution program parallelly executed program now if i try to remove this term from the denominator you can see the resultant will be always a higher value as you can see a divided by b plus c will always be less than a divided by b because the denominator is right now a smaller value so we are going to rewrite as z of n comma p is less than or equal to sigma of n plus phi of n divided by sigma of n plus phi of n by p we are going to define a new term called f so what is f f is given as sigma of n divided by sigma of n plus phi of n so this is the term which defines the ratio of time which is required for the execution of that sequential part to the total execution of the program here we are going to redefine psi of n comma p in terms of f f is given as sigma of n divided by sigma of n plus phi of n so we will rewrite sigma of n plus phi of n is equal to sigma of n divided by f rewrite the term of phi of n is equal to sigma of n divided by f minus sigma of n which can be again simplified as if we take out sigma of n outside this will become 1 by f minus 1 okay now try to rewrite this term with this value now that becomes sigma of n divided by f divided by sigma of n plus now we are going to rewrite sigma of n as this expression that becomes sigma of n into 1 by f minus 1 the whole divided by p this is what is written here now if i divide each of these terms by sigma of n you can see that this sigma of n will be cut off giving us 1 by f this will become 1 and here again this is cut off which makes it 1 by f minus 1 divided by p again we will divide each term by 1 by f so 1 by f divided by 1 by f which makes it 1 One divided by one by f, which makes it as one plus one by f divided by one by f minus one by one by f, which makes it one minus f, and the whole thing divided by p. which is actually this equation as you can see now we have simplified psi of n comma p is less than or equal to 1 by f plus 1 minus f divided by p so amdahl's law states that if s f is the fraction of operations which are computed sequentially where f is between 0 and 1 the maximum speed up psi achievable by any parallel computer with the p processors is given as psi is less than or equal to 1 by f plus 1 minus f by p so it is actually putting an upper limit to the speed up we'll see again with an example here the question is 95 percentage of the program's execution time occurs inside a loop which can be executed in parallel so what is the maximum speed up which can be achieved with eight cpus now see here it is given that the parallel time parallel execution time is around 95 percentage so we can assume that definitely the sequential time is taking 5 percentage of the 
total execution. And here P is given as H. Now what is F? F is the fraction of the sequential time taken. So definitely 5 percentage means 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Again, as per the equation, psi is much lesser than 1 divided by f plus 1, 1 minus f divided by p, which is much lesser than 1 divided by 0 0.5 plus 1 minus 0 0.5 divided by h. Now you can see this is the equation which is approximately equal to 5.9. Again, we will see one more question. In example 2, it is given that 5% of the parallel program execution time is spent on sequential code. So what is the maximum speed up achievable? But here you can see that there is no, uh, uh, no indication of the number of processes available. So that means it can go up to infinity. In this example, it is given that 5% of the parallel program's execution time is spent on the sequential code. There is no indication of the number of processes available. So what we can do is we can assume that P can take the value up to infinity. So we will try to limit this equation. 1 divided by F plus 1 minus F divided by P. So here there is no indication of P, but we know F. F is 0. 0 0.05 plus 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by p. Now p can take value up to infinity. If you can uh, assume that if p is going to be a very high value, automatically what happens is this term will naturally tend to become 0. Whenever the denominator becomes a very high value, the resultant will be 0, almost equivalent to 0. So this term will be nullified and which can be termed as 1 by 0 0.05. Now see, this is how we compute, which makes it 20. The maximum speed up achievable for this particular program, even though you increase the number of processes up to n infinity, it becomes 20. So another question for you is, an oceanogra oceanographer gives you a serial program and asks you how much faster it might run on eight processor. So you can only find one function which can be turned as a parallel solution. So benchmarking on a single processor reveals that 80% of that execution time is spent inside this function. That means inside that parallel function. So what is the best speed up a parallel version is likely to achieve on eight processors. So you can see that when you run that particular program on a sequential computer, it says that 80% is spent on that loop and 20% is spent on the sequential part. So naturally what becomes F? F is equal to 20% and P is equal to 8. Please uh, try to uh, find out the result using the same equation that you used previously. No, this is the answer, which is approximately equal to 3.3. Now, what are the limitations of Amdahl's law? See, Amdahl's law actually puts a limit on the future of parallelism. It says that it can go up to this level. So, or the maximum speed up which is available for this particular program is this. So it actually doesn't consider the uh, variant possibilities of the same program. So considering a standard variation of a program, this much uh, part is executed sequentially, this much part is executed parallelly, we are trying to assume the speed up which is available. Another uh, limitation of Amdahl's law is we are totally forgetting the term kappa of n comma p. See, whenever there is more than one processor involved, definitely there will be communication overhead. So we are totally forgetting the term kappa of n comma p in Amdahl's law. So Amdahl's law usually overestimate the speed up available. Now what is Amdahl's effect? Amdahl's effect is the speed up is usually an increasing function of the problem size. See, n represents the problem size. Whenever n increases, naturally the time is taken for uh, executing the sequential part or in parallel part increases. So this f might also increase. So speed up is usually an increasing function of the problem size. 
so here you can see a plot where the number of processes are increased and you can see the time required for the execution as you can see when there is only one processor involved this is the time taken for execution when you increase the number of processors into two the time taken is reduced to half of it but you can see that even though you increase the number of processors significantly there is no drastic change in the time required finally it gets to a constant time so we'll again see the time required for the communication initially there is only one processor no communication overhead is there so when you um, when you add one more processor to it naturally there is a communication overhead involved when you have three processors involved you have slightly more communication overhead so you can see that there is a gradual increase in the communication overhead and finally it gets stabilized so if you merge those two diagrams this is the plot or execution time required for a parallel portion where sigma of n by p plus kappa of n by p you actually merge those two diagrams into one now this is the speed up plot the maximum achievable time it may stabilize over here now illustration of the amdal's law you for n is equal to 100 n is equal to 1000 and n is equal to 10000 processors so usually you will get a peak somewhere around here where you get an optimal time optimal speed up and gradually it gets decreases even though you increase the number of processes